Today, I'm gonna to walk you through my algorithmic investing portfolio that I've been building for over a year. While the stock market's been in a bear market, these strategies have almost annihilated the performance of the S&P 500, some of them reaching 100% or more returns in the past year. So this is BioRect, and I've been running this strategy since September 30th of last year. I put $50 into it, and today it's worth $133. That's a 163% return in 339 days, or 171% returns in a year, or 14 and a quarter percent per month. Month. However, this is also a strategy that I threw $50 into back in October 24 of last year, and it is down 77% in 315 days or 87% loss in a year. So depending on how you use algorithmic investing, you can drastically outperform the stock market or you can completely blow up your account. So we're going to cover a little bit around the ideas and thesis behind how to build a correct portfolio and how to avoid strategies that can be potentially damaging. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how algorithmic investing works. I'm going to show you my first portfolio that I built almost over a year ago, as well as my second portfolio, which is my actively managed portfolio. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name is Garen Phillips. I've been teaching myself the stock market for six years now. I have a main YouTube channel of 183,000 subscribers. I started out in day trading and low float. I got into dividend and long-term investing. I've been studying money and finance for quite a long time. And over the past six years, I've done day trading, momentum swing trading, momentum intraday trading, dividend investing, fundamental investing. I've even invested in cryptocurrency. The only thing that I haven't done is options trading and futures trading. And at the end of this video, I'm not going to sell you a course either. So in May of 2023, I found a software called Composer, which is a no code algorithmic investing platform, meaning that you don't have to know how to write Python code some form of elvish he says i can't read it to build your own algorithmic portfolios seven months later i was one of the top one percent builders of the platform designing over 506 strategies and doing a ridiculous amount of back test and testing so what is algorithmic investing well it is rule-based investing plain and simple standard algo logic is basically just if then statements if this happens do this if that doesn't happen do that or to get a bit more specific though there is usually a momentum switch which makes you take a long position like when the s p 500 is going up you obviously want to buy the s p 500 but when it's going down you can switch your strategy or your investment into something else called a short or heads position and i'll show you that right here this is an algo called the dot-com bubble this is an algo that can be ran back to 1990 and it's pretty simple. It's only two lines of code. So the first logic we're going to look at is if the price of the S&P 500 is above the 200 day moving average. So here we can see the S&P 500 when the price is above the yellow line, which is the 200 day moving average, we are buying the S&P 500. You obviously want to buy it when it's going up. And when it turns red on the background, that means we are below the yellow line, which is a bear market. And we want to switch our strategy and protect our investments by moving our money into something else. So we have a long position here, which is the S&P 500. That's when you buy into the green. But then when we are below that yellow line, we're going into what's called a mean reversion and a a defensive hedge. So what we're looking at here is the next line of logic, which is the 10 day relative strength index of QQQ is greater than 30%. So if you don't know, mean reversion is one of the most popular ways to profit and outperform the S&P 500 or the stock market when it comes to algorithmic investing. Mean reversions are pretty simple. There's usually an average that a price will oscillate around. And anytime it gets extremely overbought or extremely oversold on the long ends, you can actually take a position there temporarily to profit. And that's what this logic does here. So the first thing we do is if we're in normal market conditions, we're going into a hedge, which is XLP. XLP is consumer staples. This is a sector of the stock market that's super defensive. Think of companies like CVS, Costco's, Walgreens, uh, any company that is essential for life to continue, even during a recession, is consumer staples. So that, those companies usually perform decently during those times. We're basically moving our investment out of the S&P 500 into a defensive sector. However, if the QQQ is below 30, then we are buying XLK. And let me hop over to TradingView and show you what this logic actually looks like. So what I'm going to do is turn off the two uh, moving averages and I'm going to turn on the RSI. And then I'm going to open up this bottom one. And this is the RSI. We're going to switch this to the 10 day. And I'm going to color it real quick to white so you can see it a little bit better. And you'll notice that the backgrounds here on the chart 
are lit up anytime the price or the, the RSI of the QQQ drops below 30 here. Anytime we hit below this point or this line, you'll see it lit up. And what we're doing here is basically taking a temporary long position to capture tiny bits of profit right here. Anytime this is triggered, we're basically t capturing a little bit of profit every single time there. And that's called a mean reversion. It's one of the most popular ways to profit in algorithmic investing. And when we look at the back test of this strategy, we can go all the way back to 1999 or the dot-com bubble. And you can see that it's quite profitable through the dot-com bubble. And this big run up here is actually that mean reversion basically capturing profit off of that 30 RSI. But even if we scroll over and remove that mean reversion, you can see that the strategy performs better than the S&P 500 during the dot-com crash. And then and through the housing market crash, we also get an outperformance because it basically switches to a defensive position. Uh, it does the same through this period because it, we're just buying the S&P 500 through the 2010s to 2020. And then now we have co the COVID crash as well as the current bear market here. So that's the basics of how algorithmic investing works. Typically, you have a long momentum switch such as the 200 day moving average, and then you can get more advanced with it, which we'll go into a little bit in maybe future episodes. But let's hop over and take a look at my actual portfolio and I want to kind of give you a high view idea of the strategy behind building a portfolio for algorithmic investing. Okay, so let's hop into my first portfolio that I launched over a year ago. Now I call this portfolio my Darwin portfolio because it's really it was just a test bed. Uh, the goal with this portfolio was not to beat the stock market or be extremely profitable. Um, in fact, you can see that the portfolio is uh, actually negative 2% right now, which kind of begs the question, why would you get into algorithmic investing? But the goal was not to profit with this portfolio. I, a year ago, didn't know a whole lot about algorithmic investing. So what I wanted to do was basically fire off as many strategies as I could to see what would stick. And actually, a lot of these strategies are not even mine. They were actually built in our community that I run, which is a Discord community of about almost 4,000 people right now. It's probably the best place on the internet to learn algorithmic investing, if I'm being honest. I, you know, I don't want to like, I don't want, I don't want that to sound wrong, but like it, we actually have an amazing community where you can learn and be educated and people will help you out. And there's all kinds of questions here. We have a database of over, over like 4,000 strategies and a lot of the strategies that are in this portfolio were actually pulled from some of the best designers and builders in the community. So if you haven't joined the community yet, I highly recommend checking out our discord. There'll be a link below and you can also find it on our website, investorscollaborative.com. So let's take a look at the portfolio. I've got a lot of strategies in here. There's quite a few, I think over 40 or 50 of them. And what I basically did was just throw 50 bucks into them and let them run. I just wanted to track their performance, track the data and see what works and what doesn't. And I've learned a lot over the past year. You can see that some of these strategies have performed 154%, 100%, 84% at their top end. Right now, they're still drastically outperforming the S&P 500. But if I scroll down here to the bottom, there's also a lot of strategies that have underperformed. This one is at $15 uh, from $50. That sucks. And a lot of them were launched in October of last year. Now, one other note that I'd like to say here is these line charts didn't start till January 3rd of this year. However, you can see one of my best strategies started in September of 30th. This is because the software was not tracking the performance up until January 1st. So if we actually do the math on that, this top strategy, if we do 126 minus 50, is $76 right now divided by 50. We're, that strategy is actually up 152% right now, even though if I scrub over here, it only says 100%. Um, it's actually much higher than that because the data is not tracked on the, uh, the screen. So let me talk real quick about high view portfolio design. So there's different ways to design an algorithmic portfolio. You can actively manage it and you can tweak things and change things and you can t take strategies in and out. I haven't done that with any of this portfolio because that wasn't the intent, but you can do that. However, there is also another argument that if you build a portfolio like this and you just let the strategies run, Theoretically, if you have half of your strategies profitable and the other half go to zero, like how this portfolio is kind of doing, eventually the strategies that are bad can only go to zero. So it's a 
basically a linear loss to zero. You can only ever lose the 50 bucks that you put in. However, the strategies that are profitable and do work well, as long as they continue to perform for years in years out, those strategies will outperform and outgrow the ones that went to zero and eventually your portfolio will take off. So that's one theory or idea to keep in mind when building a portfolio. Now, let me hop into some of these strategies that are profitable and the ones that are not profitable and you'll probably start to see some similarities here. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is Biorect. This is actually a variant of a very popular strategy called TTTQ for the long term, which was built by one of our community members, Derek Nelson. And this strategy is quite simple, really. Let's go hop into the edited version and I'll walk you through it. The first thing we have is the 200 day moving average of SPY, you know, a long moving average. And then we have a 10 day RSI. This is a mean reversion, just like we looked at earlier. We have another 10 day on SPXL, which is another mean reversion. This is better by the dip NASDAQ by me. I actually designed a piece of logic. I won't get into this logic, but it's basically just kind of a, it's a variant of another piece of logic that I don't want to get into for this video. Then uh, if the S&P 500 is bearish, we're going into this next logic, which is just a 10 day RSI of QQQ, then a 10 day of SPY. And then we're doing another 10 day of UVXY. Uh, this is volatility ETF, and then another 10 day. And then we're doing a rotation here, then another 20 day movement and rotation here. So these this logic right here is a very popular logic for profiting during a bear market. And I'm actually gonna show you another strategy that uses this that's a little bit easier to understand. But what I want you to look at here is just look at the length of this logic. There's not a whole lot of stuff going on here. I mean, it, it might look confusing if you're brand new, but there really isn't too many branches of logic here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, roughly about 15 lines of logic, which isn't a whole lot. Uh, there's some strategies that have way more than this. And th this is what I want you to take away from this video right here, is just keep in mind, you know, roughly 15 lines of logic. There seems to be a sweet spot of depth or length when it comes to algorithmic strategies, usually somewhere between six to 20 lines of logic is like the golden ratio of a good strategy. I'm gonna hop over to one more. This is gonna be QLED for the long term. This is another variant that's very similar to the one that we just looked at. This is one I talk about a lot actually. And again, we have the 200 day moving average, 10 day RSI, 10 day RSI, 10 day RSI. And then we have this logic here, which is a short rotator. So what this does, and this is how you profit during a bear market. So when I run this three year back test, you can see that it just absolutely walks over the COVID crash and it walks over the current bear market uh, that we're in right now. And the way that it does that is this logic right here. It looks at the QQQ is less than the 20 day moving average of the QQQ. So we'll hop over to QQQ real quick and I will show you how this logic works. We're gonna turn on our moving averages again. And this time I'm going to turn on my 20 day moving average. And I think I'm gonna turn off this and we will turn on that. So you'll notice in the red area, we now have a, a, a bright red and a white red. What this indicates is when the price is below this white line, which is the 20 day moving average, we're going into a bear strategy or a bear rotator. When we're above the 20 day moving average, we're gonna buy the QQQ. So during these areas here, we're buying QQQ. And when we're in the dark red areas, we're going into a short strategy. If we go over to the logic, this is the short logic that profits during the bear market. What this is doing is essentially rotating between US bonds and a short position in the QQQ. So we're rotating temporarily depending on what's going on with the 10 day RSI. And then when we're above the 20 day, we're buying QQQ. So that's how you profit during a bear market. Well, that's one way you can profit during a bear market. There's other ways to design strategies to do that. Those are two strategies that have been performing really well. And you'll notice if I just open up the top strategies performing here and we I just scroll you don't even have to look at the logic just keep in mind how long it is just pay attention to how long the logic pieces are they're not terribly complex this one is basically just a bunch of sort functions it's it's just a, it, it looks long but it's just a bunch of tickers the actual logic is not that long then we've got the next one 
And then here's one of the simplest ones that's actually pretty profitable. This one is up 29% and it's literally just a basket of tickers and that's, that's all it is. Now, if I go down here to some of the most losing ones, let me open these up and this might take a minute to load. So now I'm just going to set my mouse and I'm just gonna start scrolling. And as I sit here and talk, you can kind of see how complex and how crazy the strategy is. This is where I want to introduce you to the concept of overfitting. So overfitting, the best and simplest way I've heard it explained is I want you to imagine that you're, you're building a race car. But if you build a race car to only perform specifically really good at one track, and then you take it to another track and it completely crashes and burns because you've tuned it specifically for that one track, that's essentially overfitting. So there's a concept in algorithmic design that you want to keep your strategies as simple as possible so that way they don't get hyper fit to one specific market regime which, which switches. If that doesn't make sense, let me show you how to spot an overfit strategy very quickly. Okay, so what I did is I found a strategy in the community tab and I want to show you how to spot an overfit strategy. Anytime you look at a strategy that's been shared, you'll see this OSS line, which is essentially out of sample line, or the strategy was basically built and launched at this line. Anytime you see the back test, which is this part of the strategy, does not match the out of sample performance of the strategy, there's a really good indication that that strategy is probably overfit. And as you can see, we can scroll through here and it's got a lot of logic and a lot of lines here which indicates that it's probably a very dangerous or overfit strategy when it comes to finding good strategies and bad strategies simple is always best and you also want to look at the out of sample performance and compare it to the back tested performance and it needs to match up as accurately as possible now let me find one that's actually performed decently over this period this is v1a silicone it's not perfect. This definitely doesn't match exactly at the back test, but it still is profitable. But this area here does have me kind of worried. Let's find another one. So this one I actually really like. This one has performance that is very similar to its back test. Its back test and its out of performance continues a very smooth equity line. So this is a strategy, and as you can see, it's it's not too complicated. It's It's got very simple logic to it. Now, the last thing I wanna show you in this video is actually a guide that I've put together for you to learn the basics of algorithmic investing. So if you're wanting to learn more about this, this guy's completely free. You're not gonna have to buy anything. And there is a welcome package with 18 pre-built algos, and this guide will walk you through how all of them were built and by the end of this guide you will know almost everything you need to know to get started with algorithmic investing just when you get to it you can select whether you're a day trader a long-term investor or a newbie investor and we've got basically guided material to educate you on how everything works when it comes to algorithmic investing and lastly if you have any questions and you have not yet joined the discord join the discord and then we have a channel here called newbie help where we have moderators and people that will jump in and help you and answer any questions that you have if you have any questions specific on the portfolio or the stuff that I've shown in this video, feel free to shoot them in the comments and I will answer them in the next video. And in the next video, I will show you my actively managed portfolio and the kind of the idea and the thesis behind it.